Little was said. That was the point. This is a silent scream, organizers told us. Look at them and don't look away. Many gathered on this day, healthcare workers calling on the International Red Cross to help the hostages. Aaron Brodutch is here too, a voice for his brother's wife and children, who he says are pawns in a cruel and complicated war. This is a situation that is a violation of human rights. It is a violation of international law. It is something that needs to be decoupled from all the other things in this war. Our best hope is that they're safe underground and they haven't seen sunlight for the last month. And this is kind of the best case scenario. I don't even want to start imagining the worst case scenario um, because I have to stay strong and fight for them. In the raging conflict and a staggering Palestinian death count, the Israeli hostages are another layer of tragedy. For their family members and the communities standing behind them, these are haunting calls for mercy and for humanity. So many faces, so many empty chairs. This Shabbat table in downtown Toronto was set up as a symbolic reminder that every hostage has a family desperate to get them back. Mayan Zin seems hollowed. She says she's barely slept or eaten in more than a month. Mayan, I know if um, you can try this in English. Can you um, tell me what is going through your heart right now? I have a carousel in my heart. Um, one moment I am uh, happy because I think uh, uh, good about my uh, girls. And one moment I uh, cry. 15-year-old Daphna, who loves to sing, and her 8-year-old sister Ella were visiting her ex-husband when they were kidnapped. Zin wanted to share a window into her nightmare. She sent us this video, live streamed by Hamas soldiers. It shows the girls with their father before he, his partner and her son were killed and they were taken. The girls last seen, Zin says, in these photos posted by Hamas. Zin recently made a desperate appeal to Israel and its allies. Rescue my girls or take me to them and let me be a hostage with them too. In another post, she appeals in Arabic to release her girls and for any woman who might be with them to simply hug them until she can. I can't bear the situation, she says thinking that they are alone and nobody is able to take care of them or be with them. As we speak, Zin suddenly gets up and returns holding the pajamas her girls last wore. So I have only this now. Oh, my daughter. So I have a little bit smell and um, something to hug. In the uncertainty, there is space for agonizing hope, too. Many of the hostages are elderly who rely on medication for chronic conditions. <laughs> Their families are now part of organized appeals and individual ones. This is Mayan Sigal Koren. She and her sister Geffen Sigal speak to everyone they can. I'm Joanna. Nice to meet you, Geffen. I'm sorry it's the, under these circumstances. Hi, Anna. Nice to meet you. Sigal's mother, Clara, and four other family members are also captive. These interviews aren't easy, she says, but she has to do them. What is it like for you to live with that uncertainty? It's impossible. It's really hard. I feel like I'm surviving. Sometimes when we are fighting for our loved ones, we found the strengths that we might don't, don't, didn't know that we have before. Clara Marmon, a former kindergarten teacher who loves to bake, whose partner, Louis Har, loves to dance. Glimmers of lives before, Sigal refuses to give up on them. She and other family even celebrated her mother's 64th birthday, despite and because she wasn't there. This uh, celebration, it's really hard to call it celebration for us because we only celebrate the lives that we 
think that everybody might have there, but we don't know if and how she is. And it was really, really hard for us. And but it's important. It's important uh, to do it. And we really want the world not mm-hmm. to um, stay aside and to help us to release them. Holding on to the promise of light. It's a daily exercise. Brodach checks in often with his brother, who was helping others when his wife and children were kidnapped. <laughs> Brodach asks how he is. His brother's response says it all. They're still in Gaza. This is Agal, my sister-in-law. She's just a... Uh, an incredible person. She's a flea. She's 10. She turned 10 on the day she was kidnapped. She's just a, an adorable, adorable child. She was here for a month in Toronto this summer. Hostage posters of his niece and nephews, boys who loved Minecraft and making messes, seem surreal. Brodach has taken them to nearly a dozen rallies already and keeps hoping he won't have to anymore. And you're, you're continuing these efforts with that vision in mind because you don't entertain, you won't entertain, or do you want to think about the alternatives? A hundred percent. I start every day thinking that by the end of the day we'll see them brought back. A hundred percent. And uh, when my kids ask me when are they going to come back, I say tomorrow. And they say, you say that every day, and I tell them, I am going to keep saying that every day until we get them back.